friends. Welcome back and welcome to my bakery. I am opening a bakery right now. We're actually like a little bit behind schedule. We're staying with my in-laws and there's a lot going on. So I just thought I would come and sit at the bakery and try and film this. Although there's a lot of noise going on here too. We are right on Main Street and people like to play their music very loud. So we're just gonna work with what we have. Anyway, I wanted to give you a how-to on my rats that I have been sharing on social media. These are the rats we're gonna start with and these are the rats we're gonna end up with. I'm gonna show you three different ways to do this because you don't have to get too complicated. These actually have a really great shape. They just need a little bit of a makeover. These guys have just been painted and you really don't need to flock them. So this is level one, just painting. I mean, I feel like it's just a world of difference. The next level would be the flocked mice and then the most advanced would be these flying mice on broomsticks. So I'm gonna show you how to do all of them. You can skip ahead or, you know, stop when you've reached whatever makes you happy. I'm also going to show you the mistakes that I made along the way real quick. I've made the mistakes so you don't have to. So it's almost October. Let's not waste any more time. Let's make some rats. Okay, welcome to mistake number one. I spray painted these. Do not spray paint rubber. There's something about rubber. I, I don't know. I just know that it doesn't work. You can spray paint plastic, but rubber will just never dry. It will stay really tacky and it's just a mess. And I had to take all of this paint off with acetone, which was messy in itself and kind of dissolved the rubber also, and some of these tails fell off and now I have to glue them back on. So just avoid my mistake and don't spray paint your rats. So let me show you the right way to do it. You're gonna start off by trimming off those whiskers. I am just using an X-Acto knife. You can use clippers, just something that clips it right up to the skin so you don't have any whisker bumpies left. Now this next little surgery I'm going to do is for the rats flying on broomsticks. So if you just wanna upgrade your rats and you don't wanna to go too in depth, you can go ahead and skip this part. But if you do want little rats flying on broomsticks, which I just think are the most precious thing, you're gonna make an incision all the way from the chest down to the tail. And then we're gonna make incisions around the thighs and kind of make a V when you get to the bottom part, you'll see. Okay, here's the other thing, and I'm gonna save you a lot of time and heartache. Hot glue will not work. It just won't keep this together. They really need a lot to secure them in place. So I took embroidery thread and sewed everything together. You're going to overlap those two front pieces and use a thimble, or you can brace your needle against a craft mat but you will need like a little bit of pressure to push it through. 
and then I'm tying like four knots everywhere. Then we're gonna cross the feet over and sew those, and then we're going to sew the hands together as well. And then you can see you'll just be able to slide a broomstick in and he's already looking so cute. I just think I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant. But here's the thing. There's an opening on the bottom and I don't know. I thought it looked weird. So I filled mine with that expanding foam, but it was also very, very messy. And ugh, I was really upset this day. This was also my first time working with this and I was not being very patient, so that's my fault. But I'm opening a bakery, you guys. I'm, I'm doing rats and I'm opening bakeries and it's just a lot at once. And there's so many other crafts that I wanted to do this season and I will do, but I'm also opening a bakery, so I really don't know how I'm going to. But anyway, I thought I, I'm going to put this whole time lapse here because I think it's kind of funny how some of these just kind of totally explode and some of them just don't really seem to expand at all. You're going to wait for it to dry completely and then you'll take an X-Acto knife and just kind of cut that off and paint that part too. I just went over the... Do you hear this? How cool. Oh, how cool. Your, your car is so loud. That's so annoying. If you have a car like that, stop. Stop. Nobody cares. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. Okay. Now I'm going to stop uh, until the next one comes. Um, by the way, do you notice this like crazy floor behind me? I didn't even like acknowledge the floor. This is actually a skim coat on top of Pebble Tech because at one point this place used to be like a sporting goods store. I don't know what it is. It's just like a bunch of little pebbles glued together. It's terrible and it's impossible to take up. So we're floating the entire thing and then we're gonna put some faux wood floors. It's like vinyl, but it looks like it's very convincing. Anyway, that's why it looks like crazy. Okay, so now we're going to paint them and I just used gray paint. I use mostly Martha Stewart, but I've got some other just like standard paint from the craft store. 
And if you're just doing a gray coat, I would just do a little bit lighter and darker gray. Try and put some shadows here and there, maybe like around the face, make him a little bit brighter. And then around the back, put some dark spots. It'll just add a little bit of variation and make it more convincing. And then you're gonna add a very light pink to the tail, the hands, the feet, and the nose. And I kind of like airbrushed it out a little bit here because their hair is sparse on the little nose part. And then um, you can kind of see through and it's, it's so cute. And then you can go back in and paint the eyes again. And once the eyes go in, it's all just gonna pop. It all comes together and looks so cute. So if you wanna go another step further, you can flock them, which I think is very sweet because they're fuzzy and they look a little bit more realistic. However, I'm showing you a little time-lapse here of one that I flocked all at once and this was a mistake because if you paint the entire piece all at once the glue is going to dry in certain areas and the flocking powder will only stick to the areas where the glue is wet and so when i did too big an area at once it would leave patches and then i had to go in and fill in those patches and it just did not look even so what I found to work better was just to do one little section at a time. So I did all the heads first, and then I went back in and did the middle section, and then I went back in and did the bottom. I think I gave myself 60 seconds. I would paint the glue on in 60 seconds and whatever I could cover, then I would flock. And you'll see it worked so much better. The flocking powder stuck to everything I put glue on and I was happier. I was a happy girl. The cats, this is my mother-in-law's cat, and um, he actually thought that these were real mice. So I think that's a vote of confidence. Here is what I did for the whiskers. And you guys, I feel like this made all the difference. This is what is going to like set these mice apart. So we replaced these ugly little chunky whiskers with fishing line and it's so much more delicate and beautiful and it's so easy to do. I had this tool that came in my dollhouse kit and I don't really know what it's for, but it's basically an X-Acto knife with a needle attached instead of a blade. And so I used it to punch holes in the rubber and rubber is kind of self-healing. So if you make a hole in it, it's going to expand and then it'll slowly close up. So I didn't even need to use glue. I just punched a hole and had my fishing line ready and just stuck it right in. You have to be kind of quick because you can see it starts to heal up on itself. But when you have the fishing line in there, it will squeeze around the fishing line and it will just make, it will hold it. It's amazing. So these were actually very easy and satisfying to do. If you add the expanding foam, please be warned that it will dry pretty stiff and getting that broom in there after will be a bit of a challenge. So if you don't mind the hole, and also kind of in hindsight, I'm thinking that maybe I could have just stuffed something in there, like some cotton, and it would have been fine. However, I do feel like the expanding foam kind of like glued his thighs in place. So just, you know, take that, decide what you want to do. I'm just trying to give you all of the information, but like I was saying, it's going to be really hard to squish this little body enough to get that broom in. So you'll have to cut out a little piece underneath and slide it in and just do your best to work this little broomstick in. I made quite a few of these. I think I made like 28. Um, and really they are just a big broomstick cut up and glued into tiny little broomsticks. It's, it's not hard at all. Um, I just cheap and I didn't want to spend $3 for like three mini broomsticks when I could buy like a real broomstick for six dollars and make as many as i needed you may have to go back in and touch up those eyes if you do the flocking powder but you can just sew 
your needle through the back. I just did an in and out point, and so it's on a little loop. And I'm gonna put some command hooks up on the ceiling and then fly these all the way across. And I just think this is the cutest thing I've ever made. And I think they're gonna be really cool when they're all together and there's just mice everywhere. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for sticking through it. I'm sure there's gonna be awful noise in the background of this video. And so I apologize in advance. I will find that out when I go home to edit this tonight. Hopefully I'll be back next week with another DIY. And if I'm not, it's because I'm opening a bakery. But come see me. We're on Main Street. We're at 110 West Main Street in Visalia. Okay. Bye, guys.